I came across this Vox video and I clicked on it and to my surprise, I found this one animation that I just had to make a video on. It's a super sick map animation and without me yapping too much, let's just hop straight into After Effects. No, nothing crazy today. I have a 1920 by 1080 composition set up at 24 frames per second, nothing fancy. All we need for this one is Apple Maps, or you can use Google Maps too, but I like the 3D effect of the Apple Maps, it just gives it a little bit more of a look, but all you wanna do is find a cool place. So in this instance, I've just pulled up Washington DC. It looks pretty cool. And what we wanna do here is just take a screenshot of that, which I've already done, and then we can take that into After Effects. So now we have this in here, I'm just gonna pre-comp it, and I'm gonna leave all attributes in here. So just hit okay, and I'm gonna drag my little screenshot in here and drag it into assets to stay nice and organized and you can double click this and we can start playing around with this just a little bit and all we want to do here is cut out the roads it's really that simple so with the layer selected we can hit g to bring up our pen tool or go up here and then we just want to zoom in a good bit and then we want to start masking out where the road is and it's really that simple you can go as advanced as you want to go you can cut around trees let's say right here you can cut around these trees and we just want something that's super clean. You can even go something as wide as just following the sidewalk here so you can just kind of cut the trees off a little bit. Go as straight as you can, get some really clean lines. And it will take just a little bit of time, especially if you go detailed enough to cut in all the trees. But the look that we're going for is just something super, super simple. And then we are gonna add a little bit of flair, just like in the example and add some cars. But for now, we're just gonna cut this out. A good tip for corners like this is if you go up to right before it starts bending and go to right where it stops bending, you click and hold shift and make sure that the line is straight, which is why we hold shift. And then we can follow that perfectly. And the way that a Bezier curve works is if you look at where this is going, that's giving you an idea of where the next click is gonna go. So right now it's completely straight. If I were to click and it was a little bit off, you can see it's gonna bend out a little bit in the direction of where the handle is. So that's why we wanna make sure that we have these straight lines, especially when working with streets like this. And this is a good time to mention that you can of course get the project file for this and all the other tutorials on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Paul. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and do that, which might save you a little bit of time or just get a little bit of an insight into how I work around some of these projects. It's a nice little help if you want to, otherwise feel free to just have fun with it and create your own projects. Now in situations like this where I have my handle going in here and I just kinda wanna go straight, we can always click and make our point and then take this and just adjust one side of it so that we get a nice straight line here but we still maintain the curve on the other side. Now we have our main cutout and we can just, you can either duplicate this or you can just go in and add multiple masks. One tip is if you wanna just do everything in one layer, you can hit M to open up your mask and just hit none for now. And then you can go back in and change the cutout modes for each one of them so that you can keep it a little bit cleaner and easier to work with since you'll have everything in one layer. Now the benefit to doing the multiple layers, which I'll be doing just to show you why it's a good idea sometimes is we can add some really nice animation to it as a, like an in animation or an out animation, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. All right, so I have cut out all the parts that I needed and I've labeled them all. You can see we've got the middle, we've got blah, blah, blah but all the roads are gone. So now if I turn on transparency, this is what we have, which I personally think looks super, super sick. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, if we go back into our main composition here, we can create something that looks a little cool. So first I'm gonna rotate it about 90 degrees to make sense for our little composition here. And I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit and sort of center it up here. You can always use your guides, but I'm just gonna sort of visually center it up to get a good sense of, of the layout. Then we can add a little bit of a background. We can do whatever color we want. You can do a light colored, you can do a dark colored background. It's really up to the kind of visual style you're gonna go for. But then I'm gonna go back into my main composition here. I'm gonna add a Lumetri color on an adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna go into the creative tab and just take the saturation all the way down. And then I'm gonna play around with the basic correction a little bit to give it just a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna up the contrast just a little bit, up the exposure just a little bit so we get something that is separate from the background. We can see some nice separation there. And uh, that's really the main goal that we're trying to go for. We just want something that doesn't look like it blends in too much. And that's why sometimes it's nice playing around with the color of the background so you can see, okay, what actually gives me some pretty good separation here uh, and play around with, with that. You can even do a colored background if you want to. For now, let's do somewhat dark background here just so it's a little bit different than the grass, which is pretty, pretty metal grayish. But the reason why I wanted to do this in separate layers is if I hit U just to hide all my layers, we can enable 3D for all these layers except for the adjustment layer. And we can take these and if I hit P, 
And then we can go forward, let's say to about one second. We can keyframe all of these. And then with the Z position, we can lift them up a little bit. So if we lift that up like that, we can select our keyframes and we can add some easy ease. And then we can go in and play around with the easing of these keyframes. Now, I already have a couple of presets in Flow. The presets you can get on my Patreon at patreon.com for some Paul, or you can just create your own presets. But what I've done here is just create this preset, which goes in super, super fast. So it's initial impact movement. And then all I'm gonna do is select all my keyframe or all my layers. And over here, I'm gonna use motion tools. And I'm just gonna use the randomize feature over here. And this is a free plugin, which you can get. Link will be in the description. And I'm just gonna set it to something like six frames. And then it's gonna randomize when they're gonna come in. And then I'm just gonna make sure that my first layer is right at the beginning. So if I play that, you can see we just get a little bit of like initial impact movement. And you can add motion blur if that's what you want. I'm not because I'm gonna go for that more Vox style and motion blur is not that at all. We'll add a little bit more stylization towards the end as well. But that is pretty much it for like our main composition here. So now if we go back, we get a nice little look here. You can enable collapse transformations and you'll just get all that in there, all the detail but you will see that our background is affected a little bit from the Lumetri color. So if you wanna do that, you can just hide that. You can copy the Lumetri color and then apply it to the uh, composition itself and that fixes it. So now you get all the area covered, you get all the movement, all the good stuff. So best of both worlds, just depends on kind of what you're working with and what you need. But this is a great start. And the next thing I wanna do is add some cars because we need something to fill up the streets of Washington DC. Now you can do this a bunch of different ways. You can use cars that are already in there or you can use something like Pixels, which has a lot of free assets that you can use. And that is what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna import a picture real quick and then we'll cut out some cars and add them to this composition. I found this picture of a, what looks like a parking lot or maybe just a bunch of broken cars. We'll just pick some that don't look too broken. But the good thing about this is that they are all overhead so they fit the perspective that we need them to fit, which is super important. Otherwise it's gonna look weird. We can just take a couple of these cars right here and uh, we can always play around with them. They're gonna be black and white anyway, so you can just mess around with the contrast and the brightness and all that good stuff. But it's really gonna be as simple as selecting your layer. Again, you wanna hit G and then you just wanna mask our car. So let's take this white car for example, and it doesn't have to be super, super perfect. We just want a nice little outline here of the car itself. You can obviously do this in Photoshop beforehand as well and make sure that they're really nice and you can have a little bit more control over your cars and all that good stuff. But then you can hit Y to bring up your anchor point and you can go and center your anchor point right in the middle of this car. So with that layer selected, I'm just gonna take my anchor point and move it right to the middle. You can add snapping, which will just make it a little bit easier to get right in the middle of the car. And this is just gonna make it easier once we start animating the cars. I'm just gonna name this car one and I'm gonna duplicate it and hit M and then delete the mask and we'll be on to car two. And I'm just gonna keep picking cars that's right next to it. The good thing is you only really need a few different copies of cars and then you can start reusing them because they're gonna be pretty small and most sedans look pretty similar from above. So you don't really have to worry about it too much. You can also use the motion tools plugin over here to center it in the little mast area, which is just gonna make it a little bit easier for you. But you know, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of getting a free plugin, that's I guess on you. So now we have our three cars here and uh, now we can start animating them. First of all, I'm gonna scale these down a little bit. So I'm just gonna hit S and scale these down to be an approximate size, which is pretty small, something like that maybe. They don't have to be true accurate one-to-ones, but it does help a little bit. So let's put this out on the road, which is out here. And let's take one of these and we'll put this car, maybe we'll put that over here and then we can rotate it and let's just make it follow that, boom. So it's like nice and parked and last but not least, this car we can maybe put over here and rotate it just a little bit. Now there's a couple of different ways you can go about animating these cars. You can either just animate them by, let's say selecting one, hitting P and then do that. What you can also do is create some fake roads using the path or a path, I should say. So if you hit G and bring up your pen tool, remove the fill and then you're just gonna add a stroke just so you can see where it's gonna go and make it something colorful that you know where kind of what it looks like. And then all you're gonna do is draw a line here. So we're gonna go do that. And you wanna keep in mind, of course, where a car will drive. So the right side on the right, depending on where you're on the world. But we'll have this path as path number one. So I'll just name path one. All you're gonna do is you wanna select your layer and search for path, that'll bring up the path. You'll just click on that and you'll copy that. And then for that car, which is car number three, you can go to the very beginning and you can set a keyframe, a position keyframe. 
and then you want to paste that path onto that. So now if we move this up a little bit to after our call or our world has come in, you can see it'll follow the path of that. Now, obviously that doesn't look too great because the car is, is sideways to begin with. You can either keyframe this yourself. If you right click the layer, then go to transform and then go to auto orient and then orient along path. You'll now see that if we then rotate this to fit with the path here, so that way, boom, and play that and then it'll automatically turn when it gets to that corner. So you don't have to worry about the animation and you don't have to worry about the rotation of the car. So it's really making it as simple as possible. And you can always select these keyframes and you can hold Alt and drag these out, which is just to determine the time it'll take for the car to drive. So now we just have it driving pretty quick. You might even set this to the very beginning almost and then just drag it out towards the end and you can move around this so you kind of decide the timing of where it goes. You pick, but that is pretty much the same thing that we're gonna do for all these other cars. So with this one, for example, let's hit G again, and let's just pick this call, which is gonna start right here. Actually, let's start here and go up so we can get a little bit of a corner here and go this way and then down this way and maybe go this way. So now we have another path and we'll just rename this again, path two. And then while that layer is selected, search for path, copy that. And then let's just go right here and for call number one, which is this one, we'll hit P set a keyframe and then paste our keyframes into that and then rotate it. We can also hide that so we can see which way we're rotating the car and just rotate it to be in the right direction. And again, right click the layer, go to transform, auto orient, orient along path. I'll get you to show my keyframes and let's just make sure that is facing the right direction there. Boom. And now we have it moving along the path perfectly how we want it to. And again, select them, drag these out if you want to be as slow as you want, as fast as you want. But now we have a car that is following the path perfectly. And again, you can add the same limit your color you want if you want to. So you can just copy that and paste it onto the cars so that they have black and white as well to fit with the style a little bit. Last bits is just maybe some highlights of the map. So let's take an ellipse and let's maybe create a little highlight right here like this. And I'm just gonna remove the stroke and just make a fill. Let's pick maybe a nice reddish color here, a little bit pastel -y. boom. And we can duplicate this as many times as we want, but first maybe add some animation. So once that's come in, let's hit S and just set that to zero. Then go forward a little bit and set that to 100%. And then towards the end, you can just keyframe that out if you want to, or you can just do a hard cut at the end. And you can add whatever easing you want. Again, you can take this sexy in easing and just have that at the beginning. So it starts fast and slows down a little bit. And then the opposite for the other one, boom. So it sl slowly starts and then zooms back out and you can duplicate this as many times as you want and just move the circle over this way, move it over this way. If you hit U, you can get these keyframes up and you can just stagger this animation a little bit so that they don't all come in at the same time. Just a little bit of visual difference and to highlight maybe, let's say this is where they're gonna pick up some people with the Uber service or whatever. Of course, these cars, you don't want to have them come in before that. So you can just have them come in as they start driving. You can add a little bit of a opacity animation to have them fade in or whatever you want. It's really up to you what you want to do. Just make sure that it's consistent in the look. So that's really all there is to it. Now to the stylization of this, one thing that we need is if we're doing the box style, we need posterized time. So I'm going to shift command Y to create an adjustment layer. And then I'm going to add the posterized time and we're just gonna set that to 12, so kind of half speed. I did have one question at one point as to why people use this shitty effect. And first of all, if you think it's shitty, you definitely don't understand the beauty of it. But second of all, it's just to create something that looks stylistic. Not everything has to be 60 frames per second with motion blur. It's most people with good taste that doesn't necessarily look good. Yes, it works for like sports or gaming, but for real life, 24 frames per second looks better and for slower paced animations like this infographics where you have stuff that you need to take in 12 frames per second just looks more pleasing and it's not as chaotic and hectic to look at we can also add an adjustment layer below the posterized time and we can add a transform effect and here we're just going to create a little bit of a camera shake so i'm just going to set that to the scale to one or two so that we don't have edges bleeding then i'm going to alt click the position and i'm going to add a posterized time to it let's set it to six you can set it to 12 you can do whatever you want it just depends on how frequent you want it to be and then we're gonna add a wiggle expression and set it to something like two, 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 comma two. And that'll just give us a little bit of camera shake here. And you can always adjust those values to get the exact look that you want. You can add a little bit of 
green, which I like to do. And the way I like to do it is hit Command Y to create a solid. And this is very important. You want to set the color to 80, 80, 80, which is also 50% gray. And just name this green. And then we can add the effect that's called add green. And you want to pick whatever preset you want. I'll just do a, a codec one is usually what I go with. Maybe this 500T and set it from preview to final output. And then I like to increase the intensity and the size just a little bit, just for a little more texture. And you can go into the application and change it to film, which will just change the way it's animated. And then you'll add a tint effect to this to make it black and white, which will work better with the overlay feature. And then I like to pre-comp it. You don't have to, but I like to pre-comp it and move all attributes into the new composition. Name this green pre, and then change the blending mode to overlay for a more pleasing, softer look, or you can go linear light, which is a more textured look. So it just depends on how much texture you actually want in there. You might even decrease the opacity of the linear light just a little bit and put that below the posterized time as well. So now we have something pretty simple and stylized. Now that is pretty much it for this little map style of animation. It's something super simple. You can use a lot of really cool techniques and it's just something fun to play with and add a little bit of flair to what's otherwise sometimes a bit boring of a map animation. I hope you learn something new or just feel inspired to go out there and create something yourself. If there's anything you'd like to see me do, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Otherwise, I mean, just have a good day, I suppose, and enjoy some After Effects. Again, patreon.com forward slash mapol if you want interested in project files for anything. And uh, yeah, that's it. I just hope I'll see you again next time. Peace out.